Okay, so proof by induction uh, time in the proofs topic, example 19. You really got to start from example 17 through 18 in order to get the idea of this. So if you haven't done so, please watch those examples. So we're going to go straight into this uh, proof here. The conjecture is that uh, the sum, uh, the series here, the sum of the terms r times r factorial from r equals 1 to n can be expressed as a formula as n plus 1 factorial minus 1 for all n greater or equal to 1. So, first of all, we want to have an initial statement and show that it's true for the smallest value of n. So, initial state, prove true for n equals 1. Let's do that. So, we take the left-hand side which is the sum of all the terms from r equals 1 to 1 of r times r factorial, which of course is just going to be, we substitute 1 in there, 1 times 1 factorial, which of course gives us the answer 1. The right hand side, substitute into uh, the formula, we've we'll, we'll got, we'll got n plus 1 factorial minus 1, so therefore that becomes 2 factorial minus 1, which is just 1, which is the left-hand side. Okay, we can say as the right-hand side equals the left-hand side, then the conjecture is true for n equals 1. That's important, that's just put up the first domino uh, and to stack the rest of them behind. The second thing is we're going to create our inductive step. So what we're really saying is that we want to declare true for n equals k. And we're going to rewrite the relationship or the conjecture here. And we're going to replace n with k. So i.e. the sum of the terms r times r factorial from r equals 1 to k is equal to k plus 1 factorial minus 1. And I tend to get you to put a little box around that because that becomes our new formula that we're going to use. Okay, so we're going to assume that that's true. And we want to prove true. We want to investigate or prove if true for n equals k plus 1. Now, if you want to see into the future, a wee glimpse, then what you need to do is to think about uh, your target, which would be to basically say that the left-hand side up to k plus 1 is equal to k plus 1 plus 1 factorial minus 1. Move that over a little bit. In other words, that's we expect instead of k to see k plus 1. So somewhere along the line, I expect to get k plus 2 factorial minus 1 in my algebraic proof. Okay? So that's what I'm looking for. And you can kind of have that at the side. It's not actually, we don't know if it's true. But if if that comes into play, then we, can, we know we're in the right lines. Okay? So, we'll go back to n equals k plus 1. So we're saying that we want to find the sum of the terms r times r factorial from r equals 1 to k plus 1. Now we can't state that target that we've just done. What we can state is the fact that the sum of this to the, uh, the series to the k plus 1 term is equal to the sum of the terms just up to k plus the last term. And we get the last term by substituting k plus 1 into the given expression. In other words, we're going to have k plus 1 multiplied by k plus 1 factorial. Okay? So we have a replacement or a substitution for this because we've just defined up above that it, this is true. So to sum up to the first k terms, we can replace as k plus 1 factorial minus 1, 
and we've still got plus k plus 1 times k plus 1 factorial. Now this is where uh, we have to start to be a bit creative because all of this we really want to look like the target. Okay, We need to get that somehow from what we've got. This is where that's why it's good to know where you're heading. Common factors are often a good thing, not always, but in this case we've got a common factor of k plus 1. So let's see what happens when we take that as a common factor. Sorry, k plus 1 factorial is my common factor. That gives me, uh, well, I can, I've got a common factor of k plus 1 for two of the terms, right? So let's see if we, if we did that, I'd have 1 plus k plus 1. Okay, and it's still got the minus 1 at the end. So it's a little bit unconventional. We don't have a, we've got the minus 1 still to deal with, but what that gives me is k plus 1 factorial times k plus 2 minus 1. Now, if we think about it, that k plus 1 factorial multiplied by k plus 2, which is the next term up, has to be the same as k plus 2 factorial minus 1. And we've already, that's us reached the, the target, but in order to make the point, we're going to break that up into just k plus 1 plus 1, so it's in exactly the same form as the original formula. So what we're saying here is that the sum of the first k plus 1 terms fits the same formula as the sum of the first k terms. In other words, if it's true for n equals k, then we've just shown that it's true for n equals k plus 1. Okay, and we've got the dominoes stacked up. However, we've already actually proved it's true as true for n equals 1, and true by induction for all subsequent values of n greater than 1. Okay, that is our proof by induction. We have done our initial step to show that it's true for n equals 1. We've then assumed it's true for some value k. We've proven that if it's true for n equals k, it's true for the next one. And then we, as we make our logic statement to say, well, we've proved it's true for 1, therefore it must be true for 2. If it's true for 2, it must be true for 3, knock on, knock on, knock on. Uh, therefore, it's true for all values of n. It's a good proof. I hope you're starting to get the idea of it. We've still got uh, another example. Uh, so you can check on and see, practice them and get to grips with uh, proof by induction. Okay.